Australia. Welcome to the show. I'm Michael Gazzelny and uh, I'm glad you're watching once again. Love and best wishes. It's been a, a difficult um, two years around the world and just remember we're all traveling companions. We've all gone through difficult times but remember even um, once all this uh, COVID is gone uh, we're still going to go through difficult times because life comes with uh, 10,000 joys and 10,000 sorrows and um, we just have to try to stay positive in the happy times and even when we're going through those uh, growth periods. Um, on today's couch, a lovely lady, her name is Eliza, and she's a uh, sexual therapist and also a tantra healer. Welcome. Did Hi. I get that right, Eliza? <laughs> yes, yes, it was <laughs> you know great. I mean? It was great. It's nice to <laughs> go with the you. flow because so many people have fixed formulas, don't they? Every day they've got their goals and this and that, and I just see this beautiful person who does some beautiful work who are you, Elisa? Who are you? Who's the great lady? Ah, so I'm a passionate Italian. I, yeah, I work as a sex therapist and I'm really supporting people connecting with their bodies, with their sexual self, and also with their heart and their soul. So I feel like my work is so much more that around their sexuality is also like really empowering people. This is amazing. We really have to simplify this because people always rush, don't they? They say, I do this, I do that. And uh, people don't talk about how much money they've got on the bank. People don't talk about going to the toilet. People don't talk about um, having sex. They don't talk about being depressed. People don't, they talk about bullshit, you know? Hello, how are you? Are you busy? I want to know and about sexual energy and how it can heal us, Elisa. Yeah, so our sexual energy is part of who we are and yes. it's a very powerful force that we have within. Absolutely. And I feel like in our culture, we tend to repress it. Repress it. And then kind of like waste it. Waste it. You know, sometimes like quick masturbation and then have a release and then just keep going with our day. And it's so much better to learn how to channel it through our bodies and kind of like move our, this like vital force that a lot of people... I might just stop you there and yes. all those uh, young men watching and people in uh, this room maybe also stop masturbating, pause, <laughs> and stop watching you porn and, and red tube and uh, you know exactly what I mean because Elisa's telling us we can do some great things if you just stop masturbating just for a, a few days. Does it help? Yes. More yeah. than like stop masturbating, it's about mm -hmm. not ejaculating or not okay. having clitoral orgasm. So it's about kind of like activate our sexual... But, but women don't have that many orgasms anyway, do they? I don't know, but I just assume that, you know, guys always want to have an orgasm and women, you know, often don't. This is, like, tell me about it. This is a real good teaching moment. Yeah, it's, it's true. Is it a true? lot of women are disconnected from their sexuality and the reason why is because we don't receive good sexual education. Because in Australia it's almost... Um, Wham, bang, thank you, ma'am. And then uh, the lady goes, but stay a bit longer, you know. Yes. Is that a problem in a relationship? Yes. Yes. It can be a problem because when there is not um, sexual satisfaction and there is like this lack of sexual connection, it also reflects in other areas of the relationship. And when like in partnership, like we really feel connected with one another and we drop into deep intimacy. We also feel more emotionally connected and happier. So, of course, like it really influences well our partnership. I see, Lisa. So it's important yes. to keep connected by making love. Is, is there a difference between making love and just rooting, just having sex? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. When we just like 
have sex maybe it's more like mechanical or more yeah. disconnected and I feel like when we make love we can bring not only our bodies but also we bring our emotional self our you know like our mind is fully present energetically we're there like we're there with more of us I feel like we can just fuck kind of like in a more superficial way you know what you're saying is very true because I, I know that after uh, meditating for a um, uh, a long time and um, making love after that is very explosive and exciting, you know? Yes. Yes, because yes. you're in the present moment and you should try that, people, you know, masturbate and then uh, make love to the uh, the person you wish to. We, we, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you know? I feel like Not Tantra really is a very good good framework for that. Like, it says when, when we make love, we want to bring all of us in the experience and it talks about like five bodies. So there is like the physical body, yeah. there is the mental body, so you want to be present with your mind. There is the emotional body, so you wouldn't be feel connected as well to your heart and to the other person, but also to yourself, you know, when you self-pleasure within yourself. And then there is the energetical body, so there is like our energy field and our spiritual body, our soul, mm-hmm. or our awareness, the depth of us. And the more we bring of us in the sexual experience, the deeper the sexual experience can go. Well, all right, it's sort of going in. I'm getting a bit of that. Yes. But, um, you know, as a criminal defense lawyer, I always uh, use this, folks. I try to simplify and clarify, and I always try to explain it like a nine year old girl could understand it, you know? So, all right. So, um, let's simplify it. So, let's, all right, yeah, please simplify I can do it. it. Yeah. Yes. So, when we, um, pleasure on the physical body yes. feels like sensations, yes. uh, like maybe movement, like sounds, pleasure on the emotional body might feel like a deep sense of connection, yes. love, yes. Uh, surrender. Yes. And so when we bring also these elements in the lovemaking, we feel this deep sense of connection. Wow. And, and is it beneficial Yes. to... Um, Oh, no, I was, going to, I was going to say Tinder, you know. <laughs> I've never used Tinder. It's probably be, be, be my time. But a lot of people are on Tinder having sex with different people. I thought it was like a dating site to find the right person. But we might talk about Tinder and um, whether it's beneficial or not beneficial to have um, sex with too many people. But we'll be back. Thanks for coming on. We'll be back very shortly. And we're back with a lovely Elisa from Italy, and we're having a bit of a laugh because so many people have got uh, closed books. Everyone's so serious, you know, no one says it the way it is. But I don't quite get it. Uh, is it good to masturbate or not? And um, I'm also concerned about Tinder. A lot of people having sex with these, a lot of different people. And does that give you sort of connection, you know? I'm confused. <laughs> All right. So yeah. to, it's great to masturbate. I yes. love to say self-pleasure instead of masturbate. Self-pleasure. But instead of doing it in a goal-oriented way for a quick release, it's about really making love with ourselves. With ourselves? Yeah, even with ourselves. Like, it's amazing to okay. self-pleasure. It's, we are our best lover. Like, I'm always going to make love with myself my whole life. So, of course, I want to be my best Elisa, lover. Lisa, can I ask you something that I'm concerned? Not that I've seen it, but I heard that on these uh, sexual sites, uh, what are they called, you porn? Um, there's a lot of stuff out there which young boys think that's the supposed to be the sexual act. Yeah, a lot that's of very sad. Stuff that's gone from the normal, you know, horizontal square dancing, just normal, you know, sort of what do you call it, the uh, up and down, you know, to this, you know, to this like chandeliers and stuff, people hang upside down and threesomes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I feel very sad about the It is, yeah, yeah, and I hope that young men don't expect that from a, um, a partner. Yeah, it's actually a problem. Like I'm seeing a yeah. lot of young men yeah. which due to watching a lot of pornography, they're having trouble having an erection when they are with the real partner. Oh. Uh, due to watching a lot of pornography, they really feel disconnected. Oh, they become immune just to... Because, it's, you know, pornography is like very stimulating and it's like getting very extreme. So what you were describing, they need to do that because it's two-dimensional, so they need to spice it up. Oh, my God. Uh, and then it's kind of like actually like change the way we get aroused. And so, but it's possible to reverse it. So it's not like something that is. There's some good take home lessons here, folks, and have a good think. Just have a think about this um, about um, do you think you might have a sex addiction? Yeah, I reckon a few, a few people are going, I think I do, you know. 
Yeah. Because people don't talk about this sort of stuff. They talk about, oh, yeah, how are we going on Easter and this and that. You know what I mean? I like And I don't you. want to also shame yeah. watching pornography. No. I understand that, you know, it's how we're raised. But if we lose the capacity to make love with ourselves without pornography, or if we think that that's, you know, how sex should look like, then we... There's a bit of that mismatch and we feel disconnected where we make love. Elise, it's, it's refreshing talking about this sort of stuff because um, it's written about, you know, it's sexual energy. And I know that um, it's sort of people who have a high sex drive are usually very um, successful. The best salespeople um, have got a high sex drive. They're usually sleazebags as well, you know, all those real estate agents and, you know, those, uh, you know, those Casanovas out there, you know. I have a lot you of sexual I mean? energy is amazing. Yeah, it's great. Yes. So, all Agreed. right, we might try that to, to I mean, masturbation without um, having an orgasm. Obviously. No, but you can have orgasm. They're right. just internal what orgasm. They're just about, like energetic what about, orgasm. What about just not um, masturbating for a while for people to cut down on it? Yeah, you can also do that, but it's good actually to let that energy flow. So, we don't want to repress it. Okay. At the beginning, you remember I was saying, like, people don't uh, harness that energy. So to harness it, to kind of like utilizing it. What about this one? What about this one? Uh, there's a 10,000 guys watching and they <laughs> masturbate every day, you know, and then they see their girlfriend, their loved one on a Saturday night. They go, I'm tired, you know, because they've masturbated, you know. And and what about if they don't masturbate so much during the week and then that night will be much more exciting, you know. Yes. And it might more that they'll try to get them into bed and they're more respectful, you know, it's all, that sexual energy will be sort of Make the night better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they can not masturbate. That's that's totally like one way. Or they can touch themselves, but don't ejaculate and mm. do it not in a way of like watching pornography and be disconnected, but like touching their bodies and kind of like feeling that warmth, that pleasure, kind of like running through the body. And I have helped so many clients like learning full body orgasm like that's achievable is within every person reach so even if it sounds like out there and you might be thinking oh my god you know it's something that only some people can learn that's so doable like it's so doable it's just like we need sexual guidance like good sex yeah. can be learned like it's i was worried about that you know there's a pub down there and uh, yeah. all these young guys you know sort of um full of confidence and uh, you know they they Doodle bastards, you know, they go out there and you think, poor girls, you know, because they're all, they're like football teams, you know, they, they want to have sex with women, you know, and and you sort of, at that age, you know, when they just want to have a root, you know, so they, yeah. they just say, oh, you know, you could get a root last night and, you know, and they always go through that age, it's quite alarming, but uh, but how did you get into Tantra, this is amazing, hmm. in a nutshell. Yeah, so I was introduced to Tantra, which is a lot more than just sex. Of course. Yeah, by my parents. So they didn't do anything abusive for people to not like things. Oh, your parents are are the free? Yeah, they're they're into Tantra and they're also into like spirituality. So I learned meditation and yoga when I was a kid. Had my first meditation retreat when I was like eight. Um, And then after like a period of... You know, kind of like rebelling towards my parents. I think like every teenager does, you know, kind of like going through that yeah, yeah, phase yeah. of rebellion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to fit in. So I started to party a bit more, to buy more expensive clothes and kind of rebel towards the teaching of my parents and study civil engineer and start to work as one. So I had like a long phase of that. Then I kind of like started to feel very disconnected from my body and my heart. And I was not happy when I was working as a civil engineer. So I decided to quit and try to heal the illnesses that have come up mm-hmm. through natural remedies. And I did. And then I started to discover that I can have multiple orgasms and all different kinds, not only clitoral one, but nipple, anal, internal. And I learned how to move this sexual energy and I started to feel more radiant and more confident. And I was like, everyone should learn this because it's possible. It's within people reach. And so I just decide to quit working as an engineer. And what did you do? And I retrain as a Taoist and Tantra teacher, and I'm working with, you know, like helping people now connecting with their bodies and just like, I feel like I healed the world one orgasm at the time. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm shocked and excited, and uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's a brand new 
um, you know, I'm into meditation, but I've got to study up on this. You know, I might need some therapy myself. We'll be back very shortly with some sexual healing. Thank you so much for watching. Love and best wishes to you. I think at the moment not, there's not many kind people around. You know, it's all, all uh, you know, like robots, isn't it? Everyone's a bit depressed, a lot of sour faces. It's funny, isn't it? Like with little kids, they're all happy and everything, friendly. They're not too worried about the opinions of other people. And then you get the old people when they go in the homes, they, they become happy like little kids again. But in the middle somehow we become these boring, sophisticated um, humans and we're too afraid to express ourselves and talk about things like, you know, how we really feel, with, you know, or or, um, or sex or, or all those things, you know. But can you imagine if uh, from now on you just uh, got rid of all that bullshit and you just expressed yourself honestly and authentically, you know. That's what I do in court. I, I used to hold something back, but, but now I just say it the way it is, you know. I, I just say it the way it is. I speak from my heart to someone else's heart and I express myself honestly and authentically, you know. Yeah, and, and people aren't used to that. No, and I think it really touches people and helps people and give them permission to also speak from that place. You are so right. All of a sudden, the guards come down. You know? Yeah. Tell me and about. I'm oh, sorry. Before no, no. So please. And it's actually, you know, this like being real, dropping mask, be authentic, and be more connected with the depth of who we are is essential as well to unlock all this pleasure that I was talking about. Eliza, being a sexual healer and therapist, and a lot of uh, male viewers would think this, uh, don't then a lot of guys think, wow, what a hot looking woman, I want to have sex with her. Yeah, I guess that of might happen. Of course they do. <laughs> yeah. see? But I also like... They, they go, oh, would you, do you want to go on a date, they'll say. You know? No, 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 never. No, 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 never happen. No? No. So do they? My come? clients are so respectful, and they would be. They'd be first-class professionals. Yeah, you know? they're they, the people who self-improvement. Are they? Are they people who maybe uh, are in a relationship and they want um, to make the relationship better, or, or anyone, even single people? Yeah, single and partnered. So I see. I see both. I see a lot of women. Like I work a lot with women, so I'm seeing oh. a lot of women that want to reconnect with that part of themselves. Yeah. And a lot of my clients might have done some meditation or yoga, some personal development, and now they want to bring that, you know, desire for growth in their sexuality. Wow. But yeah, I also like work with men and sometimes, you know, they could have some issues such as like um, porn addiction or having trouble with erections yeah, right. or, or arousal, yeah. Or arousal or ejaculating before they want because like I just want every man to know that every man can learn how to control their ejaculation and make ejaculation a choice. And so often, like, men may become in their 40s or 50s or 60s and they have this problem all their life and they just didn't know that it was so easy to find a solution because it's not so well known. Like, my profession is a bit like, you know, less. What a profession. Yeah. This is quite amazing. And um, I was going to ask you two questions. Um, yes. Osho, that's right, Osho. I, I was a big fan of Osho, living dangerously, you know, he, he was a spiritual master from India, but um, uh, in the Osho retreats, I, I saw on TV, he, uh, they were dancing and they were just having group sex with everybody. How does that fall into Tantra? You know, is that yeah, I wrong? Think like, is that bad? Having people uh, dancing and having sex with different people for pleasure, and they're all dancing, having a great time, they're meditating, they're having sex with each other. At these Osho resorts years ago, you know, people loved it. Can you tell me about that? Because I don't know. And even, uh, you know, the swingers' parties around the world, you know. Uh, I lived in a place once, they uh, exchanging keys and they were having sex with each other's wives and husbands. What's the go of that? Yeah, so I I haven't been to an Osho no. retreat, but I can tell you yes. that I don't feel there is, like, anything wrong necessarily in having sex with a group of people. Moreover, if we, you know... When you describe it, maybe in your mind it would be like just for pleasure, like you actually have said that. But when we learn how to relate to sexuality in a more sacred way, it's pleasure is almost like a side effect. It's almost like about that connection and letting the sexual energy running through our bodies. And for instance, I I have been or I've seen or I've heard of, you know, rituals in which there was involved like activating sexual energy 
and then meditating and meditating before and meditating after. And it was not about having that release, but it was like about activating our erotic body, letting energy flow and then sitting in meditation and connecting with our soul. So it's a very different, you know, understand. Um, yeah. way of approaching sexuality that you might be picturing like, oh yeah, let's go into of the course. last and just, it's yeah. very different. Yeah. Uh, and I would assume that in Osho retreat, there would be a big element of utilizing that sexual energy. Utilizing, that's right. And, and I yeah. certainly don't judge people the way they live, whether they masturbate, they're single or whether they uh, love the one person. I don't, I see clients sometimes, a man came, um, uh, two weeks ago, and um, and the client said, "My dad's got seven wives, you know, seven wives." I said, "That's great." I said, "How do they? As they all love each other, they do. Seven wives. They're all in beautiful homes and everything, you know. In the, I think they're from um, Bahrain or something or somewhere. But and then there's other people who um, love each other and they go to swingers parties once a month, you know. And I, 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 went, I went to the Gold Coast. I was there one time and. Uh, and um, I, I came across one. Somebody invited me. I said, wow, this is... Uh, you know, I haven't been. No, I was just invited to a party and all of a sudden, it, you know, wow. And, you know, and uh, but I don't judge. I, I think, you know, it's a preference and it's got, I mm. suppose it's got to be spoken about, you know, in that relationship. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like I'm personally right now in a monogamous relationship, cool, like for cool. five yeah. years. Yeah. But... You know, I'm so open to being in an open relationship. Like, it's just what feels right right now, but there is no judgment around. It's no judgment. Oh, I should be open, or, you know, the right thing is to be polyamory, or I just feel, you know, I feel moment by moment, and like. It's beautiful. No judgment, no blame, no shame. No judgment. That's right. We're, too, we're in a judgmental society, aren't we, Lisa? We shouldn't yeah, judge. Yeah, and there's the tendency of like, I am right, and my view is right, and I feel, you know, what if we release that attachment? To be right. Well, it's been a, just... such a great pleasure having you on that um, that concludes the interview, darling. But uh, mm-hmm. you're going to well, travel the world. We wish you all the very best. And uh, yeah, keep it up. Keep that authenticity. Love and best wishes to everybody. Uh, take a leave from this beautiful lady. You know, be authentic with people. Speak from your heart to the heart of others. Forget about all the bullshit and the mask. We're going into a different world, everybody. Show loving kindness and uh, be authentic. We'll see you next week. All the best.